Here I've got a nice number theory problem, and there really isn't anything earth shattering about this number theory problem. But one thing that's nice about it is it uses the current year of 2022. Another nice thing about it is it uses Fermat's little theorem, a theorem which took over 300 years to find an application. Okay, well let's review an appropriate definition and Fermat's little theorem. So we say that A is congruent to B mod N if A minus B is a multiple of N. And I'd just like to point out here that normal arithmetic plays nicely with this concept of modulo N. So that's important. So it makes sense to do normal arithmetic with this um, in this setting, I should say. And then I've got the following example, just as kind of like a warm up. The number 321 is congruent to 1 mod 5. And that's because 321 minus 1 is equal to 320, but that's a multiple of 5. It's 5 times 64. Another way of looking at this is that A and B have the same remainder when divided by N. That's an equivalent formulation of this definition. That most definitely happens in this case. If we divide 321 by 5, we get a remainder of 1. If we divide 1 by 5, we also get a remainder of 1. It's just that the quotient is 0 in that second case. Okay, so now here's the theorem that we'll use in order to come up with our solution over here. So it's called Fermat's little theorem, like I said, and it was originally stated in a letter in 1640. And it says, for all primes p and integers a, where p does not divide a, so in other words, a is not a multiple of p, we have a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. And so, for example, 17 to the 22 is congruent to 1 mod 23. That's because 17 is not a multiple of 23. 23 is prime, and then 22 is 23 minus 1. Another thing that I'd like to point out is how Fermat's little theorem applies to the modern world. And it applies to the modern world through cryptography. So there's a crypto system that's used on the internet known as, known as RSA cryptography. It's named after a combination of mathematicians and computer scientists. It was developed in the 1970s. And, and until that point, this type of number theory had essentially no applications. It was just like a pure study of mathematics. But when this crypto system was discovered, this type of number theory became one of the most important applied mathematics of kind of the modern era. So I think this is a really good example, although not the only example of why it's important to study pure mathematics, because you never know what kind of applications are going to come out of it many, many years into the future. I mean, that's not even tackling kind of the philosophical idea that pure mathematics should be studied for its own benefit, but we won't get into that here. Okay, so let's look at the problem. Our goal is to find the smallest prime factor of 2022 to the 2022 power plus 6 over 6. So the fact that we've got a large exponent here tells us that we probably want to use this for Ma's little theorem. Okay, great. So that being said, let's maybe get rid of this and then we will work on this problem. Okay, so now that we're warmed up and armed with some tools, let's look into this problem. So our goal is to find the smallest prime factor of this number. But looking at it, it looks like this number could be a rational number and a non-integral rational number. So we need to make sure that it's an integer for the first place. In other words, we need to be able to divide 6 out of this 2022. But indeed, we can do that. And that's by the factorization of 2022. So you can check this. This is 6 times 337. So actually, the fact that 2022 factors like this, where it actually has three prime factors, 2 times 3 times 337, and there are two small prime factors and one large prime factor, really means that when we get down to playing with number puzzles with the number 2022, it will be much more difficult than it was last year for 2021. Okay, so that being said, let's maybe get to this.
we can take this 2022 to the 2022 and rewrite it as 6 times 337 times 2022 to the 2021 plus 6 over 6. So I just factored one copy of 2022 out of this. But now I can cancel these sixes and I have 337 times 2022 to the 2021 plus one. Now we need to reduce this modulo a prime and then show that that reduces to zero mod that prime. That would be the same thing as saying that this thing is divisible by that prime. So let's maybe just write that up here. So we need a prime P so that this is congruent to zero modulo P. That means that prime would be a factor of this number. Okay, so the fact that this question is being asked in the first place means it's probably not too hard to find this prime. We don't have to go too far into the prime numbers. And so notice that two won't work because this number is even, so when you add one to it, you get an odd number, so it's not a multiple of two. Three won't work because 2022 is a multiple of three, and so when you add one to it, it's no longer a multiple of three. So the next smallest prime number is five. So let's try five, and let's maybe make the following observations. So we'll notice that 337 is congruent to 2 modulo 5. And then 2022 to the 2021 will be congruent to 2 to the 2021 modulo 5. But that's still a little bit problematic because we need to find the 2021st power of 2. But now we can hack for Ma's little theorem to make this work. And here's how I'll do that. Let's write 2021 as 4 times 505 plus 1. That's just 2020 plus 1. And then we can rewrite this as 2 to the 4 all to the 505 times 2 to the 1. And then this is all occurring mod 5. But now, by Fermat's little theorem, this 2 to the 4 is just equal to the number 1. That's because 4 is 5 minus 1. It's the p minus 1 in Fermat's little theorem. So this is equal to 1 to the 505, which is just 1 times 2 to the 1. So this is congruent to 2 mod 5. Okay, nice. But now we can insert these two congruences into our number up here. So let's see what we get when we do that. So reducing this whole thing mod five, we'll see that we get two times two. That's because 337 was two, and then this crazy exponent thing was also two, plus one mod five, but two times two is four, plus one is five mod five, but that is zero modulo five. Okay, so let's see what we've done. We argued that two and three were not factors of this number, but then this congruence shows that five is a factor of this number, and that's the smallest possible prime after two and three, so that means our answer in the end is the number five, and that's a good place to stop.